Hey, what's up? This is Reed. I'm here at CES 2019. There's been a lot of smart home devices announced. I'm excited to go get my hands on them. We're going to be covering a lot of things, so sit back and relax and let's go check it out. I saw a smart block of wood at CES. Yeah, seriously. It's a smart piece of wood that can control your smart home and some other things like Spotify. It's basically a thin piece of wood covering an LED screen and it has a touch screen. Touch wood, I guess? It has Google Assistant and uses Wi-Fi, and they're working on more integrations. Movie was on Kickstarter and is now on Indiegogo. It costs $550 on Indiegogo, and after that it's going to cost $1,000. I know this device isn't for everyone, but it does look awesome. Ring Doorview camera was just announced, and it's great for those with apartments or those looking for a temporary front porch solution. It replaces your existing peephole, but you can still look through it with no electronics needed. And it can sense and notify you if someone's knocking, and the camera's going to cost $200. Ring's parent company Amazon also announced that the Ring app can control select smart locks from Quickset, Schlage, and Yale using the Ring Alarm Hub. There was also some new lights and sensors announced by Ring at CES. WiseCam just announced the Max Drive. This will let you back up all your WiseCam footage and any other files you have on a laptop or desktop hard drive. You just plug it straight into the device. Your WiseCam won't need an SD card and it can still have continuous video recording using the Max Drive. There should be other new tech from WiseCam throughout the year as they hinted at other low cost gadgets that will keep disrupting the smart home space. Next I visited Nanoleaf who has really unique smart lights. You can connect their squares for Nanoleaf canvas or use their new hexagons. So they have triangles, squares, and hexagons. Man, they're going to start running out of shape soon for their new devices. These are touchable, but they don't click. They seem pretty responsive. You touch them to turn up the brightness or you can play games on them. And some other cool things about Nanoleaf is that you can form shapes into 3D designs. Of course, you can play games and you can automate it. They also set up a small room with mirrors and they set up the square canvas lights in there too and they call it the infinity room. It was really cool and it was kind of trippy. Lemetric had a similar tech with Lemetric Sky, which comes out later this year. It isn't touch enabled like Nanoleaf and it has the same functionality as their Lemetric clock, but it's just bigger and can make some different shapes. And after seeing the two, I kind of like the Nanoleaf a little bit better. Samsung had some pretty awesome TVs to show off and some smart things updates. Yeah, there were some pretty cool TVs on display at CES this year with LG's rollable TV and a lot of 8K TVs all over. Samsung had their 8K TV and it was pretty mesmerizing to look at the picture quality. One of the TVs that really stood out was the wall. And obviously it stood out. It's an entire wall that's a TV. It's 219 inches versus last year it was only 146 inches. And it's mind blowing to see how tall and clear the screen is. It uses micro LED squares that can be pieced together for different sizes. SmartThings has teased some cameras in the past, but it says that they're going to release them this year. You can have multiple SmartThings cameras streaming on the TV at the same time. They also have a device called SmartThings Vision. It's like a much better motion sensor because it can detect people versus animals and more. And it covers SmartThings a lot in this channel, so subscribe if you want to see more about this. Ultra Smart Lock is more than just a lock because it has a camera on it. It uses Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and it has three days of free cloud storage included. The camera has motion detection, but all of these features are draining the battery. Right now the battery only lasts about a month, but they believe with some software updates they can make it last about six months. So I guess we'll see. Sphero showed off some new tech that's different from their usual toys. It's called the Spectrums and these things are really cool little rings. You can use them to scan different colors and turn them into tones. So you can touch any object and it'll play that sound on your phone, making music out of like everyday objects. Super fun little toy. CES 2019 was full of new doorbells everywhere I looked, but here are a few of my favorites. Maximus Answer Dual Cam. This doorbell has two cameras, one pointing at the guests and the other pointing down for packages. The top one's 1080p and the bottom camera is 720p, but stitching them together, the video is 1080p. There's night vision on both of the cameras and a speaker that appears to be good quality and a 100 decibel siren that can go off using the speaker. But you can expect to pay a subscription just like the other Maximus cameras. The free plan only includes a two hour look back. 
The Casa Smart Video Doorbell has 2K resolution and HDR, so its footage is very clear. You also get two days of free cloud storage, but if you pay for the plan, then it will add person detection. First Alert came out with a new doorbell, and I don't really love the look, but it has an interesting feature. When it rings, you can hear the chime and speak with guests on First Alert's smoke detectors. You can do this with Nest Hello using several Google Homes, so it's not groundbreaking or anything. Lastly, Natatmo's Smart Video Doorbell. It checks a lot of the boxes. HDR, micro SD card on the doorbell, which I haven't really seen, and it backs up to Dropbox or FTP server. It doesn't require a hub, so it works on Wi-Fi, and it seems like the users will be a lot more control of their footage. It also brings up the feed quickly and has low latency for the real-time view. The Smart Doorbell has a 180-degree wide-angle view, and you can see the person's feet, so I would think you can see packages pretty easily. It also has an accelerometer on it, so if someone's trying to steal it, it will warn you about that. One other thing, it's very flexible on the voltage, so you might not need to replace your transformer like you might with the Nest Hello. Whirlpool owns KitchenAid, who announced their KitchenAid Smart Display. It's a water-resistant Google Assistant, that's a tongue twister, but one cool thing, you can actually put this device in the sink and rinse it off. The screen and speakers are that waterproof. It will cost about $200 to $300. It's also compatible with the Yumly app to walk you through recipes. Whirlpool was also showing off a concept oven called the Connected Hub Wall Oven. Kind of a dumb name. But it was very cool looking because the window to look into the oven was actually a touch screen. It helps you know how to cook your food using augmented reality. It was just a concept, but it was fun to see a glimpse into the future with technology like this. Besides their new doorbell, First Alert also released a second gen version of their safe and sound smoke and CO detector. This version has a mesh Wi-Fi system, and since it's higher up on the ceiling, it gives a better signal. And this is typically found in like a business setting. TP-Link just announced some light strips, and what's unique about these is that they can change the color and the brightness of sections of the light strip at the same time. This is awesome because typically light strips can only change the color and the brightness of the entire light strip. TP-Link's light strips have a lot of different effects that you can do which don't exist on other light strips that I've seen. The starter kit is 2 meters and you can extend it up to 10 meters which is 32 feet. The light strip is also RGBW so you can do warm and cool whites. Senglet announced a lot of new products but two things from Senglet stood out. First, their 100 watt A19 LED bulb. It's much brighter than your normal smart LED bulb at 1500 lumens. Dang, that's bright. Like it's hurting my eyes bright. It also has a vent on the light bulb to get rid of the heat. The bulb is white and you can't change it to warm or white light and it costs $22. The second thing is new light strips. You guys know how much I love light strips. Well, these work with Zigbee and they offer more than 16 million colors, but you can only change the light strip to one color at a time. So TP-Link has the advantage there. And they're supposed to cost about $50, which seems a bit high for light strips from Senglet. The Schlage Encode is a new lock that uses Wi-Fi, so no hub is needed. It costs $250 and it works with Ring so you can control your lock from the Ring live video feed. The back is smaller than the Schlage Connect and it's more quiet, so no more of that grinding. The downside is shorter battery life due to Wi-Fi. It still uses four AA batteries, and it only lasts six months. It supports Amazon Key, so you can receive packages in your home. Amazon Key will also be the current app for the Wi-Fi version until they develop their own Schlage app later. The Temi is a personal robot that can actually do things and is available now for $1,500 which is a little unusual at CES. Usually robots at CES are just cute and slightly creepy and they don't do anything. Temi is gonna be updated this year to have Alexa integration, so it'll be like an Echo show on wheels. There are sensors and cameras all over this thing to help it from running into stuff on the ground, as well as tables. The sound is very loud with a subwoofer at the bottom, two mid-range speakers, and two tweeters in the middle. Watch out, DJ Roomba. It can lock onto you and follow you around. If you're doing a video call, this would be really nice. It did feel a bit strange having this robot follow me around, but it was pretty awesome at the same time for all the things it can do. 
Honeywell released a new thermostat called the T9. It's compatible with their new sensors to track humidity and temperature in other areas of your home. These have a lot better functionality than the Nest temperature sensors overall. The sensors use two AAA batteries, so no annoying little coin battery or anything. The multiple sensors can be used at the same time to create an average temperature in the house, similar to Ecobee. Yee Light had a really colorful light for the kitchen. It has a white light on the bottom and a colorful LED light on top. This thing caught my eye because it looks so cool. I've used Yee Light strips in my kitchen and I've liked them so far. D-Bot just came out with the Osbo 960. It's a vacuum with a camera on the front to prevent it from running into small things on the ground like shoes or cables. Maybe this will solve the problem of your dog pooping in your house and your robot vacuum spreading it everywhere. And don't worry, the camera footage won't be stored in the cloud. Besides the camera, it has many of the same features as the Osbo 930, including mapping and built-in mop. Basically, it helps you become more lazy. America. Arlo came out with their Arlo Ultra recently, which is a 4K wireless camera with a 180 degree viewing angle and a spotlight. The batteries have been slightly changed and it'll be interesting to see how the battery life is on these cameras. The magnetic mount is much more flexible on the Arlo Ultra and it's still easy to install with one screw. For more details on the Arlo Ultra, check out our comparison with the Arlo Pro here. The Ultra will work with existing base stations, but the new hub that they're calling the Arlo Smart Hub will be the center of their new security system. The security system will be available the second half of 2019 and it will be compatible with Z-Wave and Zigbee devices. Arlo will also have their own multi-sensor, siren, and remote. Another thing recently announced is that the cameras are finally going to get HomeKit. Griffin is a mesh Wi-Fi router with parental controls and additional network protection. The network protection is free for a year, but it does cost $10 a month after. However, the parental controls will still be free. It does all this while keeping your up and download speeds extremely fast, 3 gigabits per second. It helps since it's all built into the router and it's not an extra accessory. Griffin is already on Amazon and there's a discount code right here for 15% off. Kohler, who last year these guys had the smart toilet, so I knew I had to stop by again in 2019. This year was all about lighting. Fancy lights in the bathroom, lights under the tub, and lights in the tub. Come on, Kohler, you're out of control. These cabinets also have motion sensor under them so that it can frost the glass when you put your foot underneath it. Really cool, but let's be honest, completely unnecessary. Well, that about does it for the CES Smart Home Roundup. I'll be reviewing a lot of these devices this year, so if you like this video, subscribe to the channel to see more smart home reviews in the future. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time. Next time on Smart Home Solver, how many Bixby speakers does it take to answer a question?